Now I'm about to tell you a story, a personal story about myself. It's a very gross story. It's nasty. If you have children, I would say that you should get them out of the room quickly. No, I would definitely gauge the, the maturity of your children and decide whether or not you would rather watch the program first and decide whether they can watch it later. Because it's a personal story and you just need to probably review it first. But I am going to tell it for this reason. Because I know that there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be afflicted with the same disorder. And they want to hear this story desperately. Are you wanting to hear it? Amen. So I'm over 50 years old. I spent the last four years with crazy periods in severe menopause. For four years, I would gush like I was literally fr frightened at the amount of blood coming out of me where I, if, if I wasn't the faith person I was, I would have been in the hospital every month because it was that bad. Because that's how much blood would come out for 15 to 17 days straight. So much bleeding, I developed a severe case of anemia. Once the period stopped after 15 to 17 days of this gushing bleeding, then I would have for the rest of the month, for four years straight, a bloody discharge. And it would come out all day long. All day long. I would have to wear the thin pads, but I'd have to change them probably once an hour. That's how bad it was. It was embarrassing, difficult, humiliating. Can you imagine being in a conference like this and having that go on? Oh, I've been there. Stacking them up, babe. You women know what I'm talking about. Right? That's what I had to deal with with four years, being on tour the whole time. It was a horrible life. I kept silent about it because I was contending the entire time, believing a promise that the Lord had told me over a decade ago that my husband and I was gonna, were going to have a child. I always was wondering, why, God? What is going on? This atmosphere in my body is not conducive for getting pregnant and having a child. Something's wrong. What is it? And everybody would tell me, oh, Kate, it's menopause, babe. You're getting old. And I'm like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Look, that's not God's original plan. We were not meant to decay and die. We were created eternal beings. It's sin that caused that to happen. And I believe God is coming to a season where he's going to start reverting that. But I do believe that God does not want us to die before our appointed time in bitterness of soul. I do believe that he wants us to die bones full of marrow and moistening, milk in our breasts, at quiet and at ease. And I'm believing that for myself and for all of you. Amen? So I was like, God, what is this? What is it? You've got to tell me. So this was during the period when I was really going after the bitterness. And one day he gave me the stories in Samuel chapter 2 and Samuel chapter 3. And I didn't get it at first, but then when I read one verse in there, it all clicked in. And I'm going to share that story with you now because once I walked this out, I got a major healing. This is a story about a bitter feud between two of Israel's generals, Abner, who was Saul's general, and Joab, who was David's general. At the time, Saul had just died. And Abner made Saul's son Ishobeth king over parts of the tribes of Israel as David was king over some of the other tribes. And during this time, Abner and his men came together with Joab and his men, and they decided to have, like, war games. And Abner said to Joab, why don't we have our, you know, some of our young men stand up and do hand-to-hand -hand combat? So they did, like 30 men stood up, and they all grabbed each other by the head, the Bible said, and they all simultaneously just stabbed each other, and they all fell down dead in one place. That was the beginning of a battle. That spurred on a battle where both armies raised up, and they began to make war. Well, one of, one of Joab's brothers, remember Joab is David's general, one of Joab's brothers, Ashiel, could run fast as a deer, the Bible says. And he decided he was going to go after Abner, Saul's general. And he begins to chase him and chase him and chase him. And Abner's running for his life. And he can't stop. And he's yelling back. He goes, Ashiel, I, I, that's you, right? And he says, you need to quit chasing me. But Ashiel was like, nope, I'm not going to stop until I get you. And, and, and Abner's running with all he's got in him. And he yells back to Ashiel again. He says, look, you've got to stop chasing me because if you don't, I will kill you. And then how could I ever face your brother Joab? And Ashiel doesn't give up. So finally, uh, Abner is running along and he takes the spear he has in him and he actually thrusts it backwards like this. 
And the spear goes back all the way through Ashiel and kills him. He drops dead on the spot. When Joab and the rest of the men catch up and see that Ashiel, Joab's brother, is dead, it takes the battle to a whole new level. Now they are fiercely, fiercely pursuing Abner and his men. Till finally Abner and his men crawl up on a high cliff and he yells down to Joab and this is what he says, listen. Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? Everybody say, bitterness in the latter end. Then Joab responded, he said, wow, as God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then in the morning the people would have gone up and continued to follow after one another. Because see, they were all brothers, they were all Israelites. But Joab, right in that moment, gets it and goes, wow, I, I need to stop this. So he blows the horn, the war stops, and everybody goes home. So that war is over for everyone but really Joab. Joab had a moment there. He said, yeah, you know what, you're right. This is going to be bitterness for us in the latter end. I better stop this battle. But then he didn't let it go. He chewed on it, and he chewed on it, and he chewed on it. And you can tell that he did what we all do, let that bitter thought let what happened to his brother, let what Abner did rotate and rotate and rotate through his mind until it formed a wound in his soul. You know how I know? Because in the end, he ends up taking bitter revenge against Abner. Let's read the rest of the story. 2 Samuel 3. Now, it says that Saul had this concubine when he died that got passed on to his son, Ishobeth. Well, Ishobeth decides that, that there's something hanky-panky going on between this concubine and, and Abner. So he goes to Abner and he accuses him of doing something with this woman. And Abner gets so angry. He's like, how dare you accuse me of some fault with this woman? What am I, a dead dog? He gets so mad, he says to Ishabeth, you know what? I am so mad that from now on, I am not going to support you as king. In fact, I'm going to go over to David's side. And I am going to support him as king over all of Israel and get all the tribes to come and be underneath his reign. So he does just that. He actually sends a message to David. And he says, make a league with me, David. Behold, my hand will be with thee to bring about all Israel unto thee. So David sends a message. Let's meet together. They do. And Abner says to David, look, I will rise. I'll go gather all of Israel unto my Lord King so that they can make a league with thee. And now that mayest that you would reign over all your heart desires. And then David sent Abner away in peace to make those things happen. Well, Joab wasn't there when it happened, when this meeting happened. He came back from pillaging with his army after Abner leaves. He finds out what David did, and he's mad. You can tell now. He's been silently in the background, but he, in his mind, he hasn't. This whole time, he's been dwelling on it, chewing on it, mm. Mm. getting madder and madder and more and more bitter. Ever been there? And he goes and he tells one of his men, he tells David, look, I can't believe you did that. Don't you know he just came to spy on you? And he stomps out of David's presence, and then he gets this idea. He tells one of his, his men, go get Abner. Act like I want to meet with him now and bring him back. So they do. And they bring Abner back and they meet. Abner meets with Joab. Joab comes to the gate. They bring Abner in and Joab murders Abner out of the bitter revenge that's in his heart. Now when David finds out, this is what he says. And these are the points right here. Ready? He said, when David heard of this, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner. Then he says this, and listen, this was the consequence, the horrible consequence that came upon Joab's life because of the bitterness that he allowed to control him and cause him to make bitter revenge on Abner. Da David says this to Joab. Let it rest then on the house of Joab and on all his father's house. Let there not be one fail from the house of Joab that hath a discharge, is a leper, that leans on the staff, falls on the sword, or that lacks bread. Did you hear what I said? Joab exacted murderous revenge, and he and his family, because it's a generational thing, were cursed because of it. And what was the, one of the curses? A discharge. What had I been dealing with for every month, for four years, for 15 days out of the month? 
this bloody discharge. You know why? On the streets, that's all I ever did. Exact bitter revenge. Don't mess with me, man, because I'll come and take everything you own. I woke up every morning, and I had a list. I had a list of people that I would go out and terrorize. That was my job. This person owes me this, and that person owes me that, and I'm going to go get this, and that person did this to me. That's the way I lived my life. I was being controlled when I was on the streets by these ancient iniquities of bitterness, and they drove me to exact bitter revenge on everyone around me. And because of that, I was cursed with the same curse Joab had, and it manifested for me as a bloody discharge every month for four years. You don't know what's happening to you right now because you have bitterness in your soul. I hope you're not mad at me as I'm preaching you this. I'm trying to help you. And when I read that, it finally settled into my brain. I was even on the phone with one of my friends who's here today when it happened. And we soaked it. Right? I remember I turned on the worship music, and I just did the two steps I always teach you. It's like I turned on the worship music, and I just started asking God, God, I repent. Heal me of all the times I took bitter revenge when I ripped people off, when I hated them, when I despised them, when I took revenge on them, when I t tormented people, when I terrorized people. You, you know, all the horrible things I did, I just re Cleanse me of all that stuff. And then I release the power, that resurrection power, the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead, that not only healed his physical body, but healed his soul of the wound that killed him in the first place, that, that heals all of us, that resurrection dunamis power that lives inside of us and makes us excellent a soul. And I just released it and believed it, and I worshiped the Lord, and I played the music, and I praised God. And then I sat down on the couch, and I went to sleep. So I fell asleep, and when I woke up, I could feel the tangible presence of the glory literally burning on my face. It felt like a, a, a sunlight was, you know, one of those sun tanning lights were burning under my skin. My skin was like sizzling, crackling with the glory. And I said, wow, God, your presence is here. What, is he, what are you doing? He said, now break the curse. You see, during that sleep, that resting in God, my soul did get healed of that wound. And then when I woke up, then he said, now, now, you see, the causeless curse doesn't alight. Once the wound is healed, then you can break the curse. Quit trying to break the curse before the wound is healed. It won't be broken. That's why when you say, I break the curse in Jesus' name, it feels so dry. And nothing happens. Because you haven't gotten the wound in your soul healed first before you commanded the curse to be broken. So see, I'd been healed then, and God said, now I'll break the curse. And I just read through everything on that list. I said, I break the curse that was on Joab of, of discharges, leprosy, one leaning on the staff, falling on the sword and lacking bread, and I break it now in Jesus' name. And within three days, that thing that had plagued me for four years straight, 15 days out of every month was dried up and gone. But it was bitterness that made it happen. Check the list. You got anything on the list? You got anything on that list? You know, discharges aren't just, you know, the feminine thing. Men have those issues too. We have discharges in our sinus cavities. Sometimes our organs will discharge poisonous bile and other toxins from them. Could be anything like that. What about leprosy? That's skin diseases like countless skin diseases are included in that little title right there. Hives, rashes, you know, eczema, whatever it is. Leprosy is also a bacterial disease. It could be any bacterial disease that's afflicting you. It's a possibility those things are coming from bitterness in your soul. What was the other curse? It says, one that leaneth on the staff. What does that mean? Any crippling disease. Any physical crippling disease. Arthritis, bone spurs osteoporosis, any of the crippling disease. Think about, think about it. Any bone disease, when you lean on the staff, could come from bitterness. What does it say in Job 21? One dies in his full strength, bones full 
of marrow and moistening, while another dies in bitterness of soul. Meaning, if you've got bitterness of soul, you won't have marrow and moistening in your bones. That's why one of these curses is, curse are you if you lean on the staff. You're going to lean on the staff because of bitterness in the soul. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because bitterness consumes. So it can consume your bones and cause you to, quote, lean on the staff. What was the, 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 the last two? Falling on the sword. What is that? Accidental death, calamity, accidents. Anybody here got one accident after the other? Maybe a spirit of suicide has come over your life. Maybe you see people falling on the sword, dying before their time. What is that? That's Job 21 again. One, another, one dies in full strength, another dies in bitterness of soul. And what was the last one? The last curse was when one lacketh bread. What is that? Poverty, famine, lack. How could poverty, famine, and lack be connected to bitterness? Well, think about it. You will prosper even as your soul prospers. Whatever's happening in here affects your money, including bitterness. I bet you never thought, I bet you never stopped yourself one time when you were getting mad at your friend and going, you know what, I'm so sick of them. I'm so tired of everything they do. I can't believe that they had the nerve to do that again. And man, if they don't stop, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And did you ever stop yourself in the middle of that diatribe and say, I better shut up because this might make me broke as a joke if I keep it up. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you see it? Do you see it? You got to think, man. We've got to get rid of all this bitterness, amen? If you're like me, you've been through some hardcore situations and dealt with some really difficult people. And those moments may have left you bitter. You'll know if this is true because you'll catch yourself replaying that incident over and over in your mind. You'll even practice what you'd say to that person while telling them off and putting them in their place. When you let your mind be consumed with bitterness like that, it will wound your soul. Then it will give the curses that come from bitterness the legal right to land in your life. So let's get healed of it now, then break those curses off. Just pray along with me. Just say, Lord, I come before you to repent for allowing myself to repeatedly meditate on taking bitter revenge. I cast those thoughts down that I allowed myself to dwell on, and I take my mind captive to Christ. I put the blood of Jesus on every bitter thought, every bitter word, and every bitter action that I took towards a person or a situation. I decree that everyone in my bloodline, including myself, is being forgiven now. I receive the cleansing power of the blood on all my sins of bitterness in Jesus' name. Okay, keep praying with me. Say, Lord, now I thank you for your dunamis power that comes from your resurrection and I decree it's healing the wounds in me that came from my sins of bitterness. Lord, cause me to be what dunamis means, excellent of soul. I decree it right now. I believe your healing power is flowing from my born again spirit man into my wounded soul to bind up my wounds. I decree I'm being set free from the control of bitterness and all the negative thoughts, words, and actions that go along with it. I decree I am excellent of soul. I am excellent of soul. I am excellent of soul. And I will be bitter no more. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now I'm gonna break those curses that are on you because of bitterness. Just stay right where you are and receive while I pray over you, okay? I break the curse of discharge off you in Jesus' name. I command that flow to stop 
and I command your body to be healed in that area in the name of Jesus. I speak to every female issue and I command it be healed now in Jesus' name. I break off infertility and barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the curse of leprosy off of you in Jesus' name. I command all skin disorders and diseases to be healed and all idolatry to come out of your soul in the name of Jesus. I command the curse of leaning on the staff to be broken now in Jesus' name. I command all crippling diseases to go. I command your body to line up and be healed in every muscle, tendon, and bone in the name of Jesus. I break the curse of falling on the sword. I command the assignment of every calamity, every accident, every suicidal thought to go now in Jesus' name. No more accidents, no more injuries, no more early deaths in the name of Jesus. And I speak life into your situation. I break that curse of lacking of bread off of all your provisions, your savings, your income, your ministries, your businesses, and streams of wealth right now to come forth in the name of Jesus. I command poverty and famine to go, and I decree that you are being prospered even as your soul prospers. I break that curse of bitter water off of you in Jesus' name. I command all swelling in your belly to go and all weakness and loss of muscle mass to be broken off of you. In Jesus' name, amen.